Good morning. Welcome back to our online classes after a short interval. We are going to learn our civics lesson 3 the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministries. In the last class, we were learning about the Union Executive in Civics Lesson 2. And in that lesson, we were learning about President and the Vice President. And the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministries are also part of the Union Executive. So we are going to learn about the uh, Union Executive that is Prime Minister and the Council of Ministries. Article 74 of the Indian Constitution says that there shall be a Council of Ministries with the Prime Minister at the head to aid and advise the President in order to advice and in order to help the president there shall be a council of ministers with the prime minister at its head and article 75 of the constitution uh, says that the president appoints the prime minister and on the advice of the prime minister the president appoints other ministers so it is clear uh, by the Article 74 and 75 of the Constitution that there should be a Prime Minister and a Council of Ministries and regarding their appointment is also uh, mentioned. The President appoints the Prime Minister and on the advice of the Prime Minister, the President uh, appoints the Council of Ministries as well. And in the uh, previous class, last class, when we were learning about the discretionary powers of the President, we learned how the President appoints the Prime Minister. That is uh, a discretionary power of the uh, President. Appointment of Prime Minister is a discretionary power of the uh, President. But other ministries are not appointed by the President uh, using his discretion. Getting the advice from the Prime Minister, the President appoints the other Ministries. And this Council of Ministries can be categorized into three groups. The three groups of Council of Ministries are the Cabinet for Cabinet Ministries, second State Ministries and third Deputy Ministries. Here we use Cabinet Ministries. Three categories of ministries. First one, cabinet ministries. Second one, the state ministries. And third, deputy ministries. This, these are the three categories of ministries. Actually, there was no categorization in the council of ministries in earlier times. Only the council of ministries was mentioned in the constitution. But the Constitution, the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act, 1978, for the first time used the term cabinet. Uh, that is, the, uh, the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act says that the President cannot make the proclamation of national emergency unless he has not, unless he has been communicated by the union cabinet in writing to make such a proclamation. The president cannot 
make the progression of an emergency if he has not communicated by the cabinet by the union cabinet so here the entire cabinet was used for the first time there is in uh, 44th constitution amendment act 1978 in 1978 only the constitution used the first time the term cabinet thereafter the distinction between council of ministers and cabinet came into being but there is no mention about the state ministries or the regional ministries okay so there are the uh, council of ministries has been categorized into three groups according to their rank so uh, what is cabinet what is state ministries and the regional ministries first one cabinet cabinet is the most group of ministries to hold the most important portfolios cabinet is a small group of ministries but the most powerful ministries who hold the most important portfolios portfolio means uh, subjects or departments most of the ministries are in charge of certain uh, departments department like uh, education health foreign affairs uh, railways defense this all are some of the departments so some of the departments are very important and cabinet ministries are kept in charge of these departments so they are holding the most important portfolios so these departments are called the portfolios and they are the most trusted ministries of the prime minister they are the experienced ministries of the uh, experienced ministries then the second one state ministries state ministries we can say ministries of state as well state ministries or ministries of state they are the second ranking ministries next to cabinet uh, the second ranking ministries are state ministries or ministries of a state they may hold or may not hold an independent portfolio it is not compulsory that uh, all the state ministries must hold uh, any uh, portfolios independently they are in charge of any portfolios they may or may not hold uh, an independent uh, portfolio but cabinet ministries they uh, definitely hold an independent portfolio and that is also an important uh, portfolio so cabinet uh, state ministries are the second ranking ministries and they may or may not hold them an independent portfolio and the third one is the deputy ministries they are the junior ministries and their responsibility is to tell the other ministries they are uh, subordinate ministries for uh, they help the other ministries in the uh, in discharging or in, uh, in the performance of the uh, portfolios and this are the functions of the other ministries the deputy ministries are helping so these are the three categories of ministries cabinet ministries ministries of state or state ministries and the deputy ministries and this ministries the name of the ministries we have seen in the previous lessons we have seen the term of lok sabha term of rajya sabha we have seen okay members of lok sabha and the term of the members of rajya sabha all this we have seen similarly ministries are also, are also having a term uh, if the most of the ministries are appointed from the lok sabha ministries are appointed from rajya sabha also so the term of lok sabha is 5 years term of members of rajya sabha is 6 years term of rajya sabha is it is a permanent house similarly we cannot say uh, a particular term for the ministries just as we are saying if a question is asked what is the term of rajya sabha the answer is it is a permanent house we cannot say any uh, definite term it is a permanent house similarly the term of ministries or is the term of ministries ministers hold office during the pleasure of the president that is the term 
we cannot say it is a two year, three year, or five year, six year back. We cannot say. A minister called holds office during the pressure of the president. That means the president only appoints the ministers, and the president has the power to dismiss the ministers. But you remember one thing: the president cannot dismiss any minister arbitrarily or by his own will. The president can minister. Uh, so sorry, the president can dismiss a minister or any or any minister on the advice of the prime minister. But since the president only appoints the ministers, it is said that a minister holds the office during the pressure of the president. Okay, that is the term of the ministers. So remember. President, sorry, minister. A yeah, minister holds the office during the pressure of the president. And before a minister takes the charge, he gives an oath of office and an oath of secrecy. And the oath of office and the oath of secrecy is administered by the president. The president administers an oath of office and an oath of A secrecy to the ministers before they take the charge, before they enter upon their office. The person can appoint a non-parliament member as minister. In order to become a minister, one should be an MP, means a member of Lok Sabha or member of Rajya Sabha. But the person then. Has the power to appoint a non-parliament member as minister. A non-parliament member also can be appointed as a minister, but there is some condition. What are the requirements needed in order to appoint a non-parliament member as a minister? The most important. Condition to be fulfilled is if the president appoints a non-parliament member as a minister, that minister must become a member of the parliament within six months of his appointment. Within six months of his appointment, he must or she must become a member of the parliament, member of Lok Sabha or member of Rajya Sabha. How the minister can become member of Lok Sabha? How the non-parliament member can become member of uh, parliament? That is by contesting election. Within six months of the appointment of the non-parliament member as a minister, he or she must contest the election and win the election. By winning the election, he becomes the member of parliament. Suppose. Uh, he is not winning the election. He is uh, losing the election. Then what happens? He has to resign. So that is the uh, condition. That is the uh, provision in order to appoint a non-parliament member as minister. The person can appoint a non-parliament member as prime minister. Also. Okay. So uh, that's all about the, the appointment. Then time. Of the uh, ministries, the difference between council of ministries and the cabinet. Council of ministries, uh, there are some uh, difference between the council of ministries and the uh, cabinet. Some other topics are there uh, in the lesson to learn um, that is regarding the powers of the cabinet. Cabinet is one of the most important uh, part of. The union administration and their process vast power. The cabinet process vast power, but uh, this year the powers of the cabinet has been skipped from the syllabus. So you can, for your uh, sake of knowledge, you can read that topic. But we have to learn the difference between council of ministers and the cabinet. Council of ministers. Is the group of ministers 
which contain cabinet ministries, ministries of state, and deputy ministries. Whereas cabinet is a small group of ministries who hold the, the most important portfolios. Council of Ministries is the group of ministries who contain, which contain all the ministries. Whereas cabinet is a small group of ministries who hold the most important portfolios. One of the uh, difference. Another uh, difference between Council of Ministries and Cabinet is in the policy making, the President, uh, right, sorry, the Prime Minister is not consulting with the Council of Ministries. Cabinet makes the policy, Cabinet is the policy making organ. But in the, in the policy making, the Prime Minister, uh, when the Council of Ministries or the Ministry, they make the internal policies and external policies of the government. The Prime Minister shall not consult with the Council of Ministries. The Prime Minister consults with the Cabinet today. So in policy making, the Prime Minister may or may not consult with the Council of Ministries, but the Prime Minister consults with the Cabinet definitely in the policy making. Then another difference is when there is a cabinet meeting, other ministries are not invited. Only the ministries of cabinet participate in the cabinet meeting. And this cabinet meeting, the formulas of the policies that takes the decision and this decision is communicated to the other ministries, state ministries and deputy ministries. They are following the decision taken by the cabinet. So, in the cabinet meeting, the Prime Minister is not inviting the other ministries, whereas the policies are formulated by the Prime Minister along with the cabinet, in the cabinet meeting. We know that the uh, in the beginning, we have learned there is a council of ministries with the prime minister at the head in order to aid and advise the president. That is the provision of the constitution. Okay, 74, Article 74 of the constitution says that the president acts in accordance with the advice of the council of ministries. But in reality, the council of ministries are not advising the president. It is the cabinet advise the president. Cabinet advise the president through the prime minister. Okay, when the when the prime minister advise the president, the prime minister gets advice from the cabinet, and this decision or this advice is given to the uh, president. But the uh, prime minister does not go to the uh, ministers of state or the deputy ministers to seek advice. Although constitution says that uh, council of ministers are advising the president, council of ministers through the prime minister advise the president. In reality, not the council of ministers advise, only the cabinet advise the president through the prime minister. So these are some of the main differences between council of ministers and the Cabinet. Now we have to learn uh, one more topic that is the ministerial responsibility. Ministerial responsibility. Ministerial responsibility. There are two types of ministerial responsibilities. One is collective ministerial responsibility or a collective responsibility of the Cabinet. Collective responsibility Collective responsibility and the second one is Individual responsibility
Okay, collective ministerial responsibility or collective responsibility and individual ministerial responsibility or individual responsibility. These are the two types of uh, responsibilities or ministerial responsibilities. First one, collective responsibility. Ministers are collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. Article 75 3 of the Constitution lays down that the ministers are collectively responsible to the House of People, that is the Lok Sabha. All the ministers are working as a team and they are responsible to the Lok Sabha. The cabinet of already told the cabinet is taking decision. The cabinet uh, and the prime minister. Prime minister is the head of the cabinet and uh, the cabinet takes the decision and this decision is communicated to the other ministries. And whether the other ministries, see when the decisions are taken or policies are made, deputy ministries and uh, state ministries are not invited. But that means the policies are formulated not with the consent of the ministries of state or the deputy ministries, but whatever policies taken by the cabinet or whatever the decisions taken by the cabinet should be followed by all the ministries. That is called a collective responsibility. All the ministries must accept the decisions taken by the cabinet. Individual ministries or ministries individually may disagree with the decisions, some of the decisions taken by the cabinet. But no matter, they have to accept the decisions taken by the cabinet and they have to support, they have to follow the decisions taken by the cabinet. That is the, uh, uh, that is said that the collective responsibility of the council of ministries. The, all the ministries are equally answerable or equally responsible to the uh, decisions taken by the cabinet or the government and the credit of the success or the failure of the government goes equally to all the ministries. If the government is a failure then the responsibility goes to all the ministries. If the government is successful then the credit goes to all the ministries. That is uh, such collective responsibility or in other words, words we can say the ministries the Council of Ministries swims and uh, sings together. Swims and uh, sings together. That means if the government is success, then there is their credit. And uh, if the government is failure, then there is their mistake coming. It is the responsibility goes to all the uh, ministries. There is collective uh, responsibility. And as a part of the collective responsibility, we have learned that in uh, lesson one, no conference motion we have learned. If the uh, opposition passes a vote of no conference or a no conference motion, what happens? The entire ministry has to say, if a vote of no conference has passed the against a single minister, then also the entire ministry has to resign. That is the best example for the collective responsibility of the Council of Ministries. Not the individual ministry is resigning. Entire ministry is the same. That is the best example for collective responsibility of the Council of Ministries. The same way, uh, the ministries are called individually responsible. Uh, indi they are having individual responsibility also. Ministries are individually responsible to the president. Why the ministries are individually responsible to the president? That is, the ministries are appointed by the president, they hold, uh, they hold the office during the pressure of the president. Since they are appointed, ministers are appointed by the president, they are responsible to the president as well. That is called the individual responsibility. The ministers are individually responsible to the president and the president can dismiss the uh, ministers. Then, under the individual responsibility, one more thing is there. Each minister is answerable to the parliament for the for, for the department he holds. 
ministries are having uh, some department that means uh, they are in charge of a portfolio or a department or a subject and the minister who got or who is in charge of a particular department is answerable to that department is he has to give satisfying answers to the members of parliament if the members of parliament is asking any doubt or they require any clarification the responsible minister or the minister who holds the the portfolio must give satisfying answers that is the that's also come under the individual responsibility of the council of ministries so uh, that is about individual responsibility and uh, collective responsibility you have seen then uh, other topic that is difference between the council of ministers and the cabinet appointment of the prime minister and uh, other ministers then a constitutional provision regarding the formation of uh, prime minister and council of ministers Uh, everything is over then one more topic is left in this lesson uh, that is prime minister and his position and the prime minister and his position we learn in the next class so that's all about uh, today's uh, topic or today's class you read the lesson well and you learn very well okay thank you